Um, we'll be going over bylaws revisions, approving our proposed budget, and reviewing the financial review, formerly known as the audit, and um, then you'll be given a link to later go on and vote on those three pieces of business. Um, so the first thing I wanted to do on the next slide was just quickly introduce um, our board. Um, so our board this year is um, me, and that's my contact information. I do work midnight shifts, so I monitor my email all the time. You're more likely to see a 3 a.m. email than a 3 p.m. email, so just feel free to reach out if I can be of any service, and if I um, can't help you, I can definitely point you in the right direction. Our vice president is Carrie Lynn Judy, secretary is Amy Wright Owens, treasurer is Amy Yaki, who's with me tonight to do some business as well. Um, our hospitality co-chairs are Krista Lucas and Jen Robertson. They do amazing things to show support to our staff here. Um, and Krista is also our reflections chair. Amy Wright Owens is our membership chair. So if you have any questions um, involving membership and joining the PTSA, absolutely reach out to her. And then Ms. Blackmore and Dr. Wheeler are our staff representation. Um, and if we can be of any assistance in any way, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, so we'll get started on our business. On the next slide, um, we're going to start with, there we go. Um, so every five years, um, every PTA, PTSA has to review their bylaws and um, make any updates that may be needed. So the bylaws committee met in August and drafted the following recommendations for change. Um, the first change that we made was that officers, the term for officers will change. So it will go from two two-year terms to one-year terms for a total of up to three. Um, we felt we, this change was recommended to make it a little less intimidating for people to commit to joining the board and also to allow for more flexibility should circumstances change, especially with everything going on. Um, the second change was um, making the general membership minimum meeting count from five meetings a year to three. We felt that um, the business at the high school level could be covered better in that, and we understand that everybody's time is valuable. So um, it just gave us a little more flexibility. And again, with everything being unknown as it is, it just allowed for a little more flexibility while still being true to and within the guidelines of our bylaws. So um, those were the two main changes that will um, be made. There was some other language that was manda mandated change by the state and national PTA. And for a full review of the bylaws, you can either email me and I will send them to you, or there's a link that'll be embedded in this PowerPoint when it is posted. Um, but voting will be open in a Google Doc that'll be sent out later um, to, to be able to vote on this. And we do need to make a motion to approve these. Amy, if you could help me with that, please. Um, I would like to make a motion to approve the bylaws um, revisions that are being made for uh, this term. I second. Thank you, Dr. Wheeler and Amy. Um, and that is our bylaws business. If there are any questions or concerns with the bylaws, please um, feel free to email me and I will assist you in any way that I can. Um, our next bit of business on the next slide, I'm actually going to turn things over to Amy, our treasurer. And she's gonna go over the next few slides with you. Amy, go ahead. All right. Good evening, everyone. I'm glad you are here. Um, our proposed budget for the 2020-2021 school year is not much different than it was last year. Um, so we have um, membership. We're hoping to get about 600 memberships this year, um, which I think we are the last count at 124, so that's 21% of what we are hoping to have. So if you have not uh, become a PTSA member, please do so. Uh, we would love to have you. Um, that would be our main source of income. We have $2,000 in fundraising we're hoping to, to do. And then um, if you look at through all of our expenses, um, it's not much different than it's been in the years past um, with grants for teachers or um, equipment or whatever we're needing to buy, hospitality, um, and state and local dues that we, um, that we pay uh, to Virginia PTA and National PTA. Um, so I will need a motion to approve this budget. I would like to make the motion, I apologize. I would like to make the motion to approve the proposed budget for the 2020-21 school year. Is there a second? Second. Thank you very much. The next slide. 
will show what our treasures report is for uh, as of today. Um, we have um, had a, let me think, starting balance of $3,840.02. We've had uh, $260 come in uh, for income, um, and that would be just our memberships that have been paid so far. Um, with the exception of those that have been paid through um, the online payment system, those will be coming um, shortly. Uh, we've had a couple of expenses, mainly for insurance. Um, we have also paid for um, the teacher breakfast for back to school. And um, there was one other thing. Um, oh, the software that we use for accounting um, purposes, we use MoneyMinder. So those are the expenses that would be $536 with an ending balance of $3,563.85. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we will move on. Um, the final order of uh, business is we had a financial review done over the summer of our books from last year. And there were a few recommendations that were made. Um, one, minutes of all meetings should be included to properly document motions and um, actions taken in regards to the finances of the organization. Each voided check should be documented and keep as part of the financial record. Insurance and bonding that we have for um, the PTSA, proper insurance has been acquired. However, the PTSA should ensure that only proper covered individuals are handling the financial record. And finally, an individual should not co-sign a check that is being issued to them for reimbursement. Um, if you would like to see a copy of our uh, financial review, you will be able to see this slide later and click on the link and have direct access to the audit uh, or financial review. I'd, I would like to make a motion to approve the audit that was completed over the summer so we can file it with Virginia PTA. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Dr. Wheeler. And I think that's all of my business. Back to you, Katie. Thank you so much for that part, Amy. Um, I just want to briefly touch on these slides. The information is there to be viewed later at your um, at your time. But Reflections has launched. I'm actually also the state Reflections chair, so this uh, this program is my baby. That's um, so please oh, consider um, participating. Um, national prizes. We have had local national winners um, in Hanover, so it's definitely a, a thing. And this year's theme is "I Matter Because." Um, we, if you have any questions or, or comments, and if you need any materials, the links are embedded in this slide. Crystal Lucas is the point of contact, but I am always open for questions um, or ideas or brainstorming. So please don't hesitate to reach out to either one of us if we can be of assistance. And also the theme search is an element of this where students are actually who select or who create the themes for future competitions. So also keep that in mind if you're not artistically inclined, but maybe you want to be creative in another way. Um, and then the following slide was um, created by hospitality, just parents and community members be um, consider joining our hospitality committee. You can do as little or as much as you want. Um, it does look a little different this year, but that doesn't mean that our teachers don't still need our support. In fact, I think they need it now more than ever. So um, if you are interested in helping out in any way, please reach out to Krista Lucas. Again, her information is in this slide or in the last one, um, or you can reach out to me and I can um, connect y'all. So. Um, um, it, any way that you could help, we would really appreciate it. And that might be it. What is our next? Oh, yes. So we do need you to vote on um, those three pieces of business that we covered. We've created a Google Doc where you can simply just put in your email address and your name and then vote yes or no on the three pieces of business. We will leave that open until October 4th at 11.59 um, uh, just to make sure that everybody has time and we may post another reminder or two in the Raider Review and if you have any questions or difficulties at all, if any of these links don't work, please don't hesitate to reach out to me and I'll make sure you get that information. And that is our PTA business. I'm going to close PTA business at 611. Thank you. All right. Uh, good evening, folks, and certainly glad to have everyone joining us this evening. I'll be in a very different way than we usually have our opening uh, back to school night. Certainly welcome to the 2020-2021 school year. 
Uh, my name is John Wheeler and certainly very proud to be the principal here at Atlee High School. Um, and that is my, I think it's called a Bitmoji. Is that right, Miss Stout? Um, so my admin team dared me to do that. I'm not sure how much it really looks like me, but nonetheless, um, there it is. Um, welcome to Atlee High School for the school year. Happy to be back. Ha happy to have students back in the building without a doubt. So we are very lucky to have, um, in my opinion, biased absolutely, but I think it's fact, uh, the very best admin team possible. Ms. Allen, Mr. Hortz, Ms. Campbell, our assistant principals, Ms. Stout, Ms. Busey, our senior teachers. Rachel Wheeler serves as our director of school counseling, and then Mr. Malloy serves as our director of student activities slash athletic director. It is important to note that uh, Ms. Campbell will be out for a few more weeks and in her place temporarily, but um, certainly no stranger to Raider Nation is Glenn Gardner, who is in this building for 27 years, the last 15 as assistant principal, and certainly have been very um, just great, great to have Mr. Gardner back in the building for the past few days, and we'll see him for the next couple weeks. So that's the admin team. Um, next slide is our counselors. Certainly no strangers to the, scout, the school counseling world. As I mentioned, Mrs. Wheeler is the director of school counseling. Ms. Liz, Liz Beatley is new to Atlee High School this year. Dr. Hammond, Karen Martin, Amy Couillard, and Shannon Edwards serves as our career counselor again. Not much of a change there, Liz Beatley joining us from the Georgetown School. She'll see, uh, serve Atlee High School on Mondays, Tuesdays, and every other Wednesday, I believe, if I got that right, right. Every other Friday, did I get that right? There we go, okay. Um, but that's our school counseling team. Um, looking to see Atlee High School by the numbers, and I, I do this every year just for the new folks joining us. We opened in 1991, so this is our 30th year of existence, so celebrating 30 years of what we're calling academic excellence. We have had in the, traditionally in the past about 1,620 students and we're gonna get more to that later. And traditionally we have had about 160, 172 staff members or thereabouts. We offer 26 varsity sports, 16 state championships, little over 13 or 316 rather thousand square feet. We became an IB world school back in 2000. And we have, uh, we're sitting on 128 acres. And what you see at the very bottom is our slogan. And we are very proud of this because we know that we've got students today and they will be leaders tomorrow. And they are, certainly will be Raiders forever. That is Atlee High School by the numbers. Staying connected is going to be key. Um, it's always critical, but even more important in the 2021 school year. Um, if, if you have not already signed up to do so, please uh, sign up through email connection. That is the best way to stay proactive and, and stay up to date um, with planned communication. You can simply go to the school division's website of hcps.us, click on the icon at the bottom of the screen. It should say email connection. It's very simple to get connected, but that is your go-to for information um, from a variety of channels, whether from the school division and from here at Atlee High School. But there are, that's not the only way to stay connected. Um, we certainly have the websites from the school division standpoint, the Atlee website, atlraidernation.com, that is our athletic link. The athletic calendar, which we'll get more to later, is capitaldistrictva.org. There's the power school email connection that I mentioned, and our three social media sites of Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, so if you have not already uh, connected to those social media platforms, we highly encourage you to do so. Daily communication, weekly communication. Like I said, um, email connection is the way to stay connected. Every Sunday, no later than 12 o'clock noon, uh, the weekly newsletter called the Raider Review is sent through Schoology and email connection. Um, in this Raider Review, in this newsletter, um, has any number of things from athletics to academics to SAT information, ACT information, scholarship information, you name it, it's in there. It is one-stop shopping for all things Atlee High School. Um, the past few editions have been upwards of nine, 10, and even 11 pages. Highly encourage you to read through that. Um, lots of information regarding Atlee High School. All morning announcements that we, we are read um, actually are uploaded to Schoology um, every day after those are complete. So another way to stay connected is through Schoology, which those email and that, or those uh, announcements are uploaded every day through Schoology. Senior scholarships. Uh, we added the slide in here because I think folks tend to forget how much money is out there to be had. So we keep this in the rate of review for pretty much the entire school year. Those are links that we highly encourage our seniors to click on. 
And if you have not already done so, please complete that scholarship application. It is due by Thursday, December 31st, just before midnight. Uh, please, please, please have your seniors, if you have seniors out there, please look at these spreadsheets, these information, just lots of money out there for seniors looking to take that next step in the 21-22 school year. So roll with the changes. Um, you see the numbers right there that we had in 1920. We finished the year just under 1,600 students. We had about 108 teachers, counselors, administrators. And you see right there the difference. Um, we have about 1,032 students right now face-to-face -face with 81 teachers, counselors, and administrators total. Um, the difference in one school year. And if you click the next slide, you'll see what the online school has. Um, obviously, last year there was no online school. This is a brand new 26th school from the Hanover County Public Schools with obviously zero students, zero teachers, and you so forth. We have 493 students who opted to go to the online school for at least the first semester. And with those 493 students went 23 teachers, one counselor, and two instructional assistants. So it's important to note that um, despite us losing almost 500 students, 23 teachers and a counselor and two instructional assistants, uh, we are basically offering the same number of courses to our students. And that is no small task that the school counseling department had to navigate within about three weeks to build a master schedule. So kudos goes to our fantastic school counseling department. But that's uh, the Raiders to Owl slide. So a few changes for the 2021 school year. Um, we're asking that all students, if you have not already notated, should be um, dropped off and picked up in the back senior lot known as parking lot H, and that is behind the 500s. Um, we've notated this and, and said this many times that the doors do not open until 845, obviously a change from last year. Um, and we are asking folks to stay in their cars and not congregate up near the doors until that 845 mark, and then they can come out of their cars and enter the building 845 uh, reporting directly to their first block. We have, um, this is out there on the Atley High School YouTube channel. There's a student drop-off video that Mr. Hortz and the ad, Atley admin team did in terms of where to get dropped off. Um, A through M, last names A through M are being dropped off between 845 and 855, N through Z, 855, 905. I've got to say, um, this has worked out absolutely flawlessly so far. So we really, really appreciate the students and parents helping us out with that. The students are coming in single file and going straight to their first block class. It has been absolutely flawless so far. So thank you so much for helping us maintain social distancing and mitigate those factors. We really appreciate that. So some other things that look different in the hallways and on the facility of Atlee High School. Um, like I said, students are entering the building no earlier than 845 and they are going straight to their first block. As you can see by these pictures, uh, during transitions between classes, um, several hallways are now one direction. All the pods are one direction and they should be followed accordingly. Uh, with these with these directional arrows. These are two examples that I put down. Um, as you see the picture on the left, that is an example of one of our main hallways that is two-way traffic, but you can see with the partitions in the middle with the arrows, students have been fantastic about following this. Um, as you can see, some of our stairwell, stairwells um, are only one-way stairwells. So there are stairwells that you only go up and there are stairwells that you only go down. And we really appreciate the students following this, trying to keep all Raiders as safe as humanly possible. We really appreciate their attention to detail on this. Lunches also look very different. Um, those are two pictures I actually took just today. Um, as you can see, um, this is the commons. Um, we actually have lunches in one of four areas. We have lunches in the commons, in the gym, as well as the aux gym and our auditorium slash lecture rooms. These two pictures were taken today, as you can see, um, we are being asked, we were asked to maximize social distancing and limiting students in terms of communal spaces. So we had to restructure how lunch was going to look. Um, in traditional years, we had upwards of 580 or so students in the commons at one time, three separate lunches. We have been asked to maximize or max out rather at only 100 students in a space at one time. And that was no small feat. We had to really think outside the box with that, and that's where the Atlee admin team really stepped up to really think outside the box with this. So what you're seeing in two pictures from lunch today, as you can see, um, those tables, those large tables in the commons are meant for 12 students, and you only see two students sitting at each table facing one way, at least six feet apart. So again, those were taken today. The gym has our AP tables, our advanced placement testing tables. 
Those are singular tables that each student sits at, again, six feet apart. Our aux gym has similar tables. We have about 40 students in there. So just one way of how the 2021 school year looks very different in terms of how lunch looks this year. Bell schedules. Um, obviously with the 845 to 915 drop off, the bell schedule is different. You'll see in the three different columns are three different primary bell schedules. The first one is the one we pretty much abide by every single day. That's our regular bell schedule. You see the 845 to 915 time slot. That is meant for student drop off. When students get there early, they are simply asked to go to first block and you know, read a book or catch up on their email, check their Schoology accounts. Um, and you see the, the um, approximate 80 minute blocks. First, second, fourth block are all 80 minutes. Third block is where we have lunch and an extend block. Um, that's an additional 20 minutes that we have embedded into our third block classes this year. And that is meant to participate in social emotional learning, which Ms. Beatley will get to hear in a little bit. Um, where they will complete surveys and conduct other housekeeping items to that additional 20 minute block. And then we have the additional independent work again from 3.30 until 4 o'clock, um, depending on when students are released. If they are first load students, second load, if they M, A through M, N through Z, whatever the case may be, that's another independent block. But those are our three bell schedules that we will abide by. On the early release, if you go back real quick, I apologize. So for the early release schedule, again, we do get out at 1.30 again for those early release days. We have one coming up, I believe that's October 12th. That's a Monday that we have PD, professional development for teachers. And there's our two hour delay schedule. Again, with a 3.30 um, stop of instructional time with that um, half an hour grace period there of instruction or independent work and student dismissal. So wearing a mask is um, something we didn't think we were going to be having to discuss back in March, but here we are in the fall and that is very much a common theme. It's, it's mandatory that all students wear a mask. It's mandatory that all staff members wear a mask when they're in the building, uh, when they're in the commons, walk in the hallways. So wearing a mask is simply the expectation. The exceptions are the following. When they're in the commons, when they're in the gym, gym uh, auditorium eating lunch, or if they take a quick drink of water, a quick snack, they will be asked to step out in the hallway if they need to have a quick snack, if they have one of those later lunch blocks. But wearing a mask is simply the norm. Um, and we ask that all students continue to do this. They have been absolutely fantastic. That they continue to abide by these social distancing norms. And we really appreciate that. Something else that's new this year is we now have a touchless water fountain that's in the commons. Um, as of right now, there's only one, but we will have up to 10. Um, by the time it's all said and done, we hope to have all 10 up and working by the end of the first semester. Certainly takes a lot of time um, from the maintenance department to get, so, get those hooked up. But right now we have one in the commons and we have nine more on the way. The vending machines are not available right now. Um, we hope to hopefully get that changed in the later part of the year, but right now the uh, vending machines are not available. So make sure that you're bringing a snack if you need to do so uh, during the course of the day. So we're asking all students to get involved, and this is nothing new. Extracurriculars, that is coming. Uh, we hope to open up some type of extracurricular meeting time dates um, as soon as in the next few weeks. And you're, you're going to hear more about this very soon, as early as this weekend. Um, right now, students are able to meet virtually with clubs and activities. We have a few doing that. They will be meeting virtually as early as next week with one of our newest clubs. For athletics, we do have a new sports calendar. If you have not heard, the BHSL voted a few weeks ago to start the school year in December with our winter season. All three seasons, the winter season, fall and spring, they're operating on a condensed format. Um, they will not have the full 10 football games and the full 22 or 25 basketball games. They are operating in very condensed seasons. Winter season will kick us off. That believe, I believe that starts on December 14th. The fall season, if you can imagine, it starts in February. So we'll have uh, Friday night football in February and March, which will be very different. And the spring season will begin in April. Uh, eligibility for students uh, interested in making sure that they are eligible. We highly encourage you to speak to your school counselor and athletic director, Mr. Malloy, to ensure that you are eligible. Transition to the four by four block this year changes a number of things in terms of eligibility. So please, if you are not sure, please contact your school counselor and Mr. Malloy, our athletic director. Communication we've talked about in terms of the websites, coaches, sponsors, social media, all those things. There are so many ways to stay connected um, with our coaches, with our sponsors. Just there's no reason to not stay fully connected at all times. That. In school spirit, that is nothing new in terms of all things Raider Nation. 
um, t-shirts, sweatshirts all are available. Please contact Mr. Malloy for those items. All right, at this time, I'm gonna turn things over to Liz Beatley. And Ms. Beatley joins us this year um, in a part-time manner, but she's a full-time counselor here in the school division. She's with us uh, three days a week, as I mentioned before. She's been at Georgetown for the past several years. I'm going to turn things over to Ms. Beatley for a session on social emotional learning. I'm so, I apologize. Can you all hear me now? Wonderful. Yes, ma'am. Sorry for that, everybody. And I am Liz Beatley, the new part-time counselor at Atlee, as Dr. Wheeler said, and I'm going to talk with you all a little bit tonight about social emotional learning. You may have heard the term SEL or social emotional learning talked about a lot recently. This is something that we as counselors have always foc focused on, um, but there is an even greater focus right now, school-wide, I would say even nationwide, um, as our families have been under unprecedented stressors. Um, so we talk about social emotional learning. What are we talking about exactly? We're talking about helping all students develop the essential skills that are necessary in the classroom and beyond. And so when you think about that, it's not just the academic skills. It's also their self-awareness their ability to recognize their own emotions, um, their goals, to identify their goals and their values, and to align them with their post-graduation plans. Um, their self-management, their ability to regulate their own emotions and behaviors, their social awareness, their understanding of and compassion for people who may have backgrounds very different from them, um, and also how to successfully interact with people who might be very different from them which leads into their relationship skills, their ability to maintain healthy relationships. Um, so we, also, we are also looking at them, their ability to, for self-control, um, to make sure they're make, thinking before they act, they act and make positive choices. And on the next slide, we will look more closely um, at how social emotional learning can benefit our students when they have the skills that we just talked about how does that make life easier for them students with a high social emotional iq um, who have learned lots of strategies for the skills that we just talked about have fewer behavioral issues less emotional distress um, more positive social behavior better relationships with others they are better ready for careers um, and are more likely to graduate from, from high school, but also from higher level learning as well. So a focus on social emotional learning at home and at school is always beneficial for all children. Again, it's particularly beneficial at a time when most students and families have ex experienced higher levels in stress than they may have previously. All right, next slide. So what are we doing here at Atlee um, to focus on social emotional learning? There's been, um, as you heard Dr. Wheeler reference earlier in third block, there is an extend time when teachers will be facilitating some different activities um, to help students develop some of the skills we mentioned previously. So they will focus on relationship building, um, personal awareness, thinking before you act, self-control. Um, and the school counselors, as well as um, some other people would be helping the teachers come up with activities to do with the students. Also, school counseling support is available as it always has been to all students and their families. Um, and school counselors do provide classroom lessons, individual and group counseling related to social emotional learning. Um, also, Hanover County has invested in an SEL program that you all as parents and guardians have access to. And so do the students and so do we staff at the school. And it's called Connect With Kids. The link is at the bottom of the screen. Would love for you to take some time and check it out. Um, you can open an account and scroll. There's many videos that you can watch dealing with current events and 
and issues that are facing our teens right now. Um, there's ideas for all sorts of things you can do as families to help with your students' social emotional growth. And of course, as Atlee always has, they're providing opportunities for relationship building, community service, and leadership activities. And the next slide. This is an article, if you click on this link, the quick stress relief link that has, um, everyone I've shared it with has found it to be a more unique, um, interesting article regarding how to take care of yourselves and how to help your children take care of themselves. It has a lot of quick stress relief ideas that aren't the typical get enough sleep, eat healthy. Some of the things that we've heard many times, this has some different ideas. Um, just one that I'll, you can read this article for yourselves, but one that I really enjoyed and thought gave a new approach is if you, it mentions if when you're experiencing stress, if you typically become more high strung, more active, um, more irritable, then a great calming thing would be, or a great stress reliever would be something calming. So something slow and quiet, like reading or going for a walk by yourself. If typically when you're experiencing high levels of stress, you become more withdrawn, isolated, then a good stress reliever would be something more active. So some form of exercise or fast paced movement. So I thought that was a new kind of interesting perspective on stress relief. And this article is packed with other great ideas. So I wanted to be sure to share that with you all. And that wraps up my presentation. I'm open for questions if anyone has any. Okay. Does anybody see any questions in the chat? I do not. I don't. If anyone does have any questions, please feel free to reach out to Ms. Beatley or any of other of our school counselors um, as it relates to social emotional learning, something we're going to be focusing on this year with our students. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Beatley. I appreciate that. So just um, as some additional information as notated in the rate review, um, the best point of contact will always be the teacher of the specific course. But if you have questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to any of our school admin team members. You see my contact information right there. Our assistant principals, including Mr. Gardner, who is serving in the interim assistant principal role in terms of the students as they serve the school year. Ms. Stout, Ms. Busey as our senior teachers, Mrs. Wheeler, the director of school counseling, and Mr. Malloy for anything extracurricular and athletic related. In the next slide, we should have our school counseling contact information, I believe. Yep. Um, Dr. Hammond, A through D, Ms. Coolyard, E through J, Ms. Martin is K through Q, Ms. Beatley, like I said, R through V on Monday, Tuesday, and the second and fourth Friday of each month. I will eventually get that straight, Ms. Beatley. I apologize. Uh, Mrs. Beatley, in her absence, uh, will be those students will be served by Mrs. Wheeler on those days. R through V on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and the first Friday, first and third Friday of every month. And she also serves students W through Z and full IB juniors and seniors. And again, Mrs. Edwards, our career counselor, is right here at Atlee on Wednesday, Thursday, as well as the first and third Friday of each month. Um, that is a lot of information in a relatively short period of time. Um, we are excited um, to be here. Um, virtually. We're excited to be here face to face with our students and we hope to get back all of our online students as soon as possible, as soon as they feel safe to come back. Um, it's been a fantastic start to the 2021 school year. I mean that wholeheartedly. Our students seem to be very excited. They are um, maintaining those social distancing uh, procedures. We really appreciate that. Our, our students are feeling safe. They're feeling good about being back and we're really excited to be here. So without further ado, um, Thank you for, for joining us. Again, we are going to wrap this up now and we are going to put this on our YouTube channel and send this out through Schoology as well as email connect and have this available on our um, social media platforms as well. But thank you for joining us, everyone. We hope to see you really soon um, and have a fantastic